Hmm. <coughs> All right, ready to do some programming. Everyone that's uh, just joining right now, uh, we're gonna learn how to make a, a we're gonna make our own uh, Twitch chatbot. It's not that difficult. Now, uh, if you want to follow along, let's start out. Uh, make an account at glitch.com. Glitch.com is really cool. It's um, it's a place where you can host a project pretty much instantly. Uh, I am not sponsored by them. I am just giant fan. Here we go, glitch.com. So manage your projects. You get a thousand active hours a month, which is way more than you're gonna end up using for, for anything that we're doing here. We're gonna make a new project and we're gonna do Hello Express. So there's two types of uh, websites that you can host on Glitch right now. One of them is a static website and that's nothing fancy. That's like the traditional website when you just have a set of files and then you do stuff. A website needs to be hosted somewhere. Glitch hosts it for free. Usually you need a domain name or, or set up a server. We don't want to do that. We just want to have something that just runs. But what Glitch does is it massively simplifies the entire, uh, the entire hosting situation. So instead of having to have a domain name, it just becomes whatever your project name is, dot glitch dot me. So we're just going to go through together. Uh, we're going to uh, go to Hello Express, make a new project. Let's give it a name, right? So this one is um, Casual uh, First Chat Bot. Well, it's not my first chat, but Casuals. Casuals First Chat Bot. So name it something that you can remember, right? And then we have all of this. We don't have to worry about most of this. Most of this just works the way it, way it is right now. This is, again, a template. And just, just because it works, we're just not gonna touch it. It works, it doesn't interfere with anything. We're just not gonna touch it. This is just something that gets the whole thing running. So what we can do here then is start start actually building the bot. And we're gonna use one major tool for that. And that is called TMI.js. TMI, I don't know what it stands for. Some guy made it a long time ago and everyone was really grateful. TMI. Well, maybe that's it, too much info. I mean, it does kind of take all the entire Twitch API and distill it down to, into something that is a little bit more manageable. So maybe TMI is meant to mean just that. But as you can see, it's an old one, published two years ago. I don't know. It still works though. The first thing we're gonna do uh, is uh, install this. So we're gonna use Node, and Node is is basically like the, the catch-all. It's it's kind of it's a it's a plugin it's a plugin framework for JavaScript, and it lets you kind of manage all of these packages a lot a lot easier than having to manually incorporate them all. So we just have a command line here, and because we're running this as an Express server we can go to tools and go into terminal. Now this is a little bit scary. It looks all intimidating with all the with all the white text and the and the and the font that looks all super technical. It makes you think like it's it's a, it's a big thing. It's it's really not. The only thing that we need to know is that in order to install this, we need to use this line right here. And in the case of using glitch, we're not actually going to copy this little this little dollar sign here. So we're just going to type in npm which is node package manager, which it's, it's this, this connects to the, to the terminal. So you're telling it to, to, to hit up NPM and then install, I is short for install. And then you just say which one, which package on NPM to install and then save. We do that just because the tutorial says so. Nice. See, it's not, it's not so scary. It's really not so scary. Okay. So we're going to go NPM I TMI dot JS save and it's going to do the thing so now what that what that basically does is it sets a bunch of stuff up it does a bunch of magic don't worry about the the warnings don't worry about the warnings as long as app status is okay right now we're we're exactly where we want to be so what we've just done is install the bot uh install the framework package the plugin that that is our interface with the bot so the next resource that we're going to access now we're going to go to the github for it uh, so TMIJS, we can basically take this take this whole block of text here and we can just copy it because this is this is supposed to work, right? This is just like, well, here's the basic example. So we're just gonna we're just gonna give that a go. We're just gonna put it a little distance away. We're just gonna make a little we're just gonna make a little note here like this is is just template. Uh, stuff. I was gonna say crap, but why 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 be vulgar? And just down here, we're gonna we're gonna paste, we're gonna paste it. We're gonna paste it and hope for the best. Let's break down what it does. What it's supposed to do is connect to our chat. 
So we're not gonna go, we're gonna go to our log. We can see login authentication failed. So obviously the mistake that we've made here <laughs> is that we're trying to log in, because let's take a quick look down the code, right? Const TMI, all right, that's gobbledy, blah, 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 blah. That sounds very technical, very technical, very technical. Username and password. There are some terms that we rec uh, recognize. We have a bot name, which in my case, we're gonna replace bot name, because we can't just log in with a universal bot name, uh, is gonna be virtual elephant. All right, login still failed because our password is not OAuth my bot token. What we need here is an OAuth token, and this is even scarier because now we're talking about OAuth tokens that give uh, give access to uh, the bot's uh, account and lets it chat and like do things. Anything that has this token controls the account essentially. But there's a way we can do this safely. We need to get our Twitch bot OAuth token. Here's one that I've clicked on before, Twitch apps. What this link is going to do, it's going to generate an OAuth token. And you need to keep this OAuth token very safe. Don't show it to anyone, don't share it anywhere, don't post it anywhere. And if you do, you can go into your Twitch account and in the same place where you can disconnect other apps that are connected to your account, you can disconnect the Twitch uh, OAuth authenticator. If you disconnect that, that will invalidate this link, this 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 key. But just just know that this is this is the sensitive bit of it. Now, before you click the link, wait, wait, wait. Be sure that you're logged into your bot account with it. You're gonna connect, you're gonna like log in and you're going to connect to it and you're gonna get your token there and it's gonna use the account that you're logged in as. So in order to keep our token safe, we're going to hide that in what's called the ENV file up here. This is where we're going to paste that information. So you're gonna take your secret, that's gonna be the token here and we don't even have to worry about this one. Don't, don't worry about that one. We just need the secret. And the secret's gonna be that OAuth token that we just copied over. I shouldn't drink this much, maybe. Well, programming. So by hiding it in there, uh, anyone that looks at this project won't be able to see the token. If you just put it in there, then anyone that looks at your project, at, at this project, which is publicly accessible, will be able to see the token. And then we have to tell, tell the server what, what the secret is. So we can go var, which stands for variable. So we're gonna replace password with secret. But the secret is variable. Variable is a way of saying it's a thing. It's just like a, an ambiguous value. We're using the variable to point to something more complicated. In this case, we're, we're telling it that secret equals a single equals sign. Uh, that, that's that's an issue for another time. Process.env. Just consider this like some sort of magical spell that you just have to kind of follow. We're telling it that secret is the thing that we referred to as secret in the env file oh yeah channel casual elephant got to point it to your channel you can point this to anyone's channel just be sure not to be a nuisance with your bot you know uh it's with great power comes great responsibility So let's start pulling this thing apart. What are we doing here? Let's let's start from the stop, uh, from the top. So server is a bunch of stuff that all seems very technical. It doesn't really matter because this is about generating a web page using Express, and we're not interested in in, in generating a web page. So we're just going to ignore that, but we're not going to touch it because it works, and it comes in a template. Bot starts here. Okay, so we got const tmi requires tmi.js. So this, what this is doing is telling the server that whenever we say uh, tmi and we're using constant instead of variable because constant never changes as where a variable is, well, variable. Whenever we're referring to tmi that requires uh, tmi.js and that's the only reason that this is working is because we did the little instally thing at the start. Then const client new 
TMI client. So now we're telling it to create a client. And what that means, whenever we say client, we're talking about the following. Stuff that's required and in the template, we're not gonna worry about that. So we're telling it all the properties of the identity, like virtual elephant, password, secret, channel. So we're, we're telling it the identity of the client, the identity and the target of the client. So now we're gonna start, this is some stuff that is specific to TMI, so client, dot connect catch console error. I'm going to guess that this has something to do with spitting out errors back at me. Okay, so now client on message. So this is the this is the key, right? This is the key part of the of the thing that we're trying to trying to detect here. So if self return. So this means that if virtual elephant says something, then don't do anything. If return means like if just fa if fa off return return to where you came from if self return so if message then to lowercase equals 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 hello so this one's a bit there's a bit to unpack here the, here's the thing about equals in javascript right it's kind of a bitch this means if message to lowercase so if message uh, and to lowercase is a function of JavaScript, that's a JavaScript thing that, that takes a series of letters and if they're upper or lowercase, it makes all of them lowercase. So message, for instance, here is an object that's sent to us, message is sent to us from Twitch whenever some, someone sends a message. That's what's going on here. Whenever someone sends a message, then do these things. That's what's going on here. Right, that makes a lot more sense. That's the way I should explain it in the first place. So the difference between equals is when you when it's just a single equal sign in JavaScript, it means make this be that. And when it's a double equals, it means is this that? If we add another equal sign here, then it's, is it the exact same thing, but like really the exact same thing? So if the message, if that message is exactly hello, then it says, hey, yeah. it says channel, Hmm, I don't know what that means. We're just gonna take that as part of the channel casual elephant. Okay, so it's gonna say in the following channel, right? Tags, well, so the tags is something from TMI. We're gonna unpack this more in just a second. Username, so it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna do a bunch of fancy stuff that we just need to trust and, and copy the template from. So the bot works.